Okay, welcome back. And in this section, let's talk about the unconscious mind. You know that you have a conscious mind. And the conscious mind is able to process 134 bits of information out of 11 million bits that we get bombarded with from second to second. The conscious mind is the part of you that's verbal, rational, thinking, and it conceptualizes everything. Now let's begin by defining the unconscious mind. Think of the unconscious mind as the part of your mind that you weren't conscious of before right now. You see, until I mention it, you weren't conscious of the feeling of your feet against the floor or your back of your legs against the chair or your back against the chair. And you certainly weren't conscious of your eyes blinking or your breathing or the beating of your heart. And all those things are things that the unconscious mind does for you. Understanding the unconscious mind puts the notion of change into perspective because the fact is that when we create change, the changes happen at the unconscious level and in conjunction with the unconscious mind. The conscious mind is only aware of now. The unconscious mind, besides being aware of now, also stores all of your memories. It's aware of the past and the future. The conscious mind learns sequentially, so one thing after the other, where the unconscious mind learns things concurrently. The conscious mind needs time to learn things. The unconscious mind can learn instantaneously. Like sticking your hand in the fire. It's hot, so you don't do it again. The conscious mind has cognitive learning and the unconscious mind is experiential. The conscious mind is in charge of voluntary movements. The unconscious mind is in charge of involuntary movements. The conscious mind is thinking and the unconscious mind is feeling. The unconscious mind is the domain of the emotions. So it's where your emotions live. Someone who's not really connected with their emotions may not have as a good connection with the unconscious mind as someone who is well connected with their emotions. So the unconscious mind is the part that feels, although certainly we are conscious of our emotions as well. Typically emotions are stored and organized and kept in the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind organizes all of our memories. And it actually uses the timeline and the mechanics of this as gestalts. Our memories are organized generally according to time, but they also organized and according to subject. They also organized according to your feeling. And that's what allows us to have a certain, like a chain of memories, of example, happiness, or a chain of memories of frustration. The unconscious mind will chain all of those together. The unconscious mind takes everything personally. And this, again, is the basis of perception's projection. It's almost as if, you know, when you point your finger at somebody and then you'd say, oh, but you've got three fingers pointing back at you. So every time you look outside of yourself and you point a finger at someone and you say, that person is so and so and that and that, the unconscious mind takes that personally and thinks you're talking about yourself. So... The unconscious mind takes everything personally, and that's like a double-edged sword. It's good, and it can be bad. It's good if you can get control of your thinking. See everybody again as a divine human being, and see yourself as divine. Now, what's really great about NLP and working with clients, whether it's in business or education or therapy, and working with clients on an everyday basis and believing that they can make change. So the unconscious mind taking everything personally is a real important part of NLP because every time you work with someone else and they change, it also increases your belief system about yourself. It increases the belief system in yourself and you change and they change. The unconscious mind works on the principle of least effort and the path of least resistance. The unconscious mind will do as little as it possibly can to produce the kind of results that you've asked for it. So it's really important because 
it means that we need to pin down the unconscious mind. We need to be very specific when we are asking for things. Example, if you set a goal and say, I would like to make more money, and you walk down the road and you find a tenner, well, that's more money. But was that what we asked for? Probably that's not what you meant. But the unconscious mind works on this principle of least effort. The unconscious mind doesn't process negatives. So if I say, don't think of a blue tree, you're probably first going to think of a blue tree. So we have to be very careful to suggest to our mind and to our clients the kind of changes we actually want them to make. Now, of course, we could tell them what not to think about. So, for example, I could say, don't think that this is going to be really, really easy to make this change. And, of course, the client's unconscious mind will pick up the really, really easy to make the change. Hearing that primarily over the, I don't want you to think it will be easy. And by telling the client then what not to do, you're actually telling them what to do. The thing is that when you ask somebody what they want, most people are really good at telling you what they don't want. Like, I want to have more money because I don't want to be poor. And so the unconscious mind, the focus there is on being poor. You see, because it doesn't register the negative. And so most people, their focus is on the things that they don't actually want. And so we need to reprogram our minds to talk in the positive, say what it is that you do want rather than what it is that you don't want. You know, we say that the conscious mind is the goal setter and the unconscious mind is the goal getter. The conscious mind is only the tip of the iceberg where the unconscious mind is all that below that you just don't see. Now, during the live training, we're actually going to be talking about this in a much deeper level. In fact, we're also going to be talking about an additional 15 prime directives of the unconscious mind and really understanding how the unconscious mind has an impact on everything that we do. And so just take a few minutes and think about this for yourself. You know, what are your thoughts about the unconscious mind? How do you think that you are influenced by your unconscious mind? So again, considering if the conscious mind is the goal setter and the unconscious mind is the goal getter, you see, the problem is that if your conscious and your unconscious minds are at variance, then the unconscious mind will usually win out. So if your conscious goal is to make more money, but unconsciously you don't believe that you are worthy of making more money, then you may be sabotaging yourself or making it really, really difficult to be creating more money in your life. So think about that a bit. How is your unconscious mind working for you? And so that's just a brief overview of the unconscious mind. And like I said, during the training, we'll talk about this in a lot more detail.